Hey guys, it is day number two of the uh, vlog here that we're doing. Uh, today we're going to be talking about 2023 as a year and kind of what I'm expecting, uh, what's going on with the world, and um, and my general view of what's going to happen here in the next 12 months. Uh, today is January 10th, um, and there's a lot of uh, news or things that have come out this past week and or you know the past two days, um, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. Specifically, we're going to talk about some of the documents that were released, um, well, some of the news that re was released about... Uh, Joe Biden and some of his um, documents that were found at the uh, Biden Penn Center in uh, D.C. there, which is related to the University of Pennsylvania. Um, some of those were classified. We're going to talk about that. Uh, we're going to talk about Coinbase, which is one of the biggest, um, if it if may not be uh, the biggest, uh, cryptocurrency exchange in the world. Um, they are letting go of 20% of their workforce. Um, we're going to talk about um, the defunding of the IRS, specifically the 87,000 new agents that were uh, brought in under the um, the last Congress, um, which have now been, from what I understand, um, the funding for those 87,000 agents have been ixnade. Um, we're also going to talk about Wells Fargo, which was one of the biggest mortgage lenders. Um, they are starting to step away from the mortgage game, uh, specifically. And they also, um, I read further into that story, and there's some really interesting, weird, weird things about that story with Wells Fargo that's going on that I think maybe um, there's more go going on there than, than what it seems like. But today I want to bring up that I am wearing double, well, I'm not wearing double denim, but denim jackets I think are coming back in. Um, if you are a millennial, as I am, I think the style from the 80s, uh, late 70s and 80s is coming back in, and so I'm going to try to be wearing denim and um, all kinds of old school cool uh, apparel here. I, you should not take fashion advice from me, obviously, but I think denim is pretty cool. And uh, if you guys are a denim wearer, let me know in the comments below. So first thing we're going to talk about uh, is 2023 as a whole. Um, briefly, let's go over that. I, I think in general, we're all kind of seeing some of the financial ramifications of the overspending in the past two, three years since COVID. Um, I think we are, we're all starting to understand that we, we overspent, um, I believe it's almost 5 trillion, it's like $4.6 trillion that we've spent in COVID, um, COVID pandemic, um, stimulus and, um, public health and, and vaccine, um, related spending. Um, and I think we've overdone it quite a bit. And I think there's going to be a, ret a retraction here in the market, specifically when it comes to stocks, which we've seen over the past 12 months or longer. Crypto is in the same boat. Um, NFTs, which are obviously a much smaller market cap, but those are obviously going down. The the housing market, which we'll talk about later with Wells Fargo, is starting to plummet or starting starting to curl over. Um, I live here in Indiana, and some of the housing market is really really starting to take a turn. Um, we had an unprecedented amount of growth here in Indiana when it came to housing. They were building new new subdivisions just about every uh, weekend. Um, and a lot of that has either stopped or they have just finished their last subdivision or, or housing development, and they're starting to to decrease that now. And, and houses are staying on the market quite a bit more. Houses, housing prices are starting to come down. Um, and then we have a lot of numbers coming from the manufacturing sector, um, and and that's something that impacts my business quite a bit is the manufacturing side of the of you know. Of, of the world. Um, material, specifically steel. I do a lot of steel or deal with a lot of steel here at my business. Um, steel prices were extreme at one point and have come down a little bit, but I think that's going to continue to go uh, up as a general trend over time, um, over 2023. Um, and then we've got food. You know, obviously the inflation with food is absolutely insane. So um, I do own a, a small flock of chickens, um, and I've been looking at chicken prices, and I've started to realize that maybe uh, maybe I'm in the wrong game. Maybe we need to switch over to being chicken farmers because the egg prices around here are absolutely absurd. I mean, when you have five dollar a dozen eggs, that's just that's absurd in every single way. So um, the general, my general view of 2023 as a whole as a year. I, I don't think we're going to have a good year, and you know maybe I'm kind of a nihilist in that regard. Um, but I am a business owner, and uh, I feel like I have a pretty good view of the uh, general ebbs and flows of the market, and it and it really feels very weak right now. Um, I'm a, a big investor in stocks and NFTs and crypto, and all of those markets have seen a huge pullback in the past six months to a year, um, and that's a reflection, obviously, of the sentiment of the general marketplace. 
of what people believe um, is going to be happening or what, what they believe the general strength of those markets are. Um, I know a lot of companies in the S&P 500 and in the Dow have seen uh, 20 to 30 percent or more um, downturns in the past 12 months, which is, I mean, it's not unheard of, but it's it's pretty extreme. Uh, 2008 would probably be the last time we saw something like that. Um, but I think it's going to continue to extend those losses. Um, and if we continue to do that over over all of 2023, which I think we we probably will, um, we may turn into or this may turn into a depression instead of a recession. Um, there are so many different organizations that have come out here recently saying there's going to be a global 2023 recession. I, I couldn't agree more. In, in fact, I think we're already in a recession. Um, I, I think we're just kind of denying the facts at this point. Um, I, I actually going to bring up an anecdotal um, thing here. Uh, my aunt has someone who uh, manages her her stock portfolio and and a lot of the investments that she uh, takes care of specifically. Um, and she's a she's a very well off woman, um, but she doesn't really. Um, manage her own money because i mean she has a, a lot of other things that she wants to do she wants to volunteer and and help people and and uh, help coach people and stuff like that because she's um getting to the retirement age but regardless um her stock person um i guess you could call him a, a manager of some kind a portfolio manager has let her know that they believe that the stock market and a lot of these investments are going to go back up in mid you know uh late q2 early q3 of this year which would be you know june july august time period I, I don't see that happening. Uh, that's my honest opinion. Um, and I've had discussions with other people about this uh, when it comes to the market. But I just don't I don't see a lot of the issues that are happening with this market right now turning around in, in six months. I mean, we're already almost halfway through January here. Um, and, and we're seeing a deepening of these um, economic factors that are really starting to hurt people. So when it comes to the economic side, and I've only talked about the economic side as of right now, I think, to be honest with you, I think we're really, really going to see a hard 2023 and possibly into 2024 where we're act, we're trying to rebuild back from, from 2023. So that's my general outlook on the year. There's a lot, a lot of things that could change. Um, and, and, you know, this could be affected by supply chain issues that could make it worse. They could make it better. We could have uh, with a new with a new Congress and the new conservative Republican Congress um, that could help solve a lot of the problems there. But I think the fundamental issues that we're having in the United States of America and where we're spending our money is incorrect. Um, and a lot of the issues that we're addressing are not important to the American people for the most part, and, and it's going to impact that bottom dollar. So 2023, uh, financially, I think it's going to be a pretty crap year. Um, when it comes to everything else, I mean, socially, I think our, the degradation of our society is continuing to deepen as we go and, you know, further on in time. Um, I, I don't think we're going to be getting any new, really revolutionary societal um Improvements. Uh, I, I believe that music in, in our uh, country slash society has been going downhill for the past 10, 15 years. Um, I graduated high school in 2013. So, I mean, I think the peak was probably around that time for my generation, at least. And it's kind of just gone downhill since then. Um, when it comes to tech, um, I think that we may see some improvements here in the blockchain and some other like there's some Ethereum advancements that are going to come out. Um, Bitcoin, uh, maybe the market cap and, and the value of Bitcoin might go down, but I think there's going to be a lot of development when it comes to technology. We have ChatGPT, which is uh, 2.0 that's that's out now. Then we have ChatGPT 3 and, and 4 that are going to be coming out here soon. And those are cool pieces of technology, and we'll see more um, artificial intelligence and more uh, development of that as we go down the road. So that'll probably be a good thing. Technology will probably um, do better in 2023, but... As a general concept, uh, or as a general uh, health of of this year and what's going on, I don't think 2023 is going to be very good. So that's just my opinion. Um, once again, please let me know if you think that something differently. Um, I, I really want to hear your opinion. I've heard from a lot of different people, but most people are kind of on the same page of the next six months at least are going to be bad. Past that point, um, you know, it's it's all kind of up in the air. Um, okay, so we talked about 2023 a little bit. Let's talk about a couple off topics. Um Biden had classified documents. Sorry for punching the mic again. Uh, Biden had classified documents in the, um, Bi I believe it's called the Biden Pen um, uh, think tank. I, I don't know the full name. I, I need to look that up. I should know that. Um, but it's essentially a think tank in D.C. there that it's funded by um, the University of, I believe it's the University of Pennsylvania. I don't want to get that wrong either. Um, in conjunction with the Biden administration, uh, specifically with his vice, uh, vice president, 
administration, um, and it was founded in 2018. Now, from what I understand, um, some of Biden's lawyers had found some classified documents that they turned over directly to, um, I believe it was the State Department, right away, which is probably the right thing to do. But I think the um, double standard there is pretty obvious when it comes to um, the the um, comparison between Biden's classified document screw up and uh, and Trump's Mar-a-Lago FBI raid there. So um, I don't know what the right answer is in that case. I don't know what you're supposed to do. I assume that probably handing over those documents was correct. But if you declassified, if, if both presidents declassified the documents before they went out of um, their administrations, you know, does that mean they're actually de- um, declassified? Um, is it different if a president does it versus a vice president? Probably not. Um, but in the end, it seems like both both guys are in the wrong. Um, I think we can, all, not all of us, but a lot of us can agree that we probably shouldn't have classified documents in the hands of politicians, especially after they're out of that administration. Um, and some of these documents, both from from Trump and also from Biden, were probably, you know, national security documents that, that probably shouldn't be outside of, you know, uh, where they should be, the State Department, the White House, wherever. So um, it's going to be interesting to see how the media um, portrays this one. From, from what I can tell already, all of the, the usual sus- suspects, MSNBC and CNN and a lot of the left-wing um, journalists, they've, they've already kind of framed this in a completely different way than, than the way that the Trump FBI raid went down. Um, and that's just to be expected. I think we all knew that that was going to happen. Um, but it's very interesting to see you know the mask fall off of the, the liberal agenda and, and kind of show... Um, you know, when it, when push comes to shove and, and when the rubber actually hits the road, when a very, very analogous situation between two presidents or president or a vice president, um, you know, are, are presented to people, um, the response is very, very different, obviously between the two sides. So that's going to be interesting going forward. Um, it kind of makes me a little bit, I mean, I'm already suspicious of the media, but it makes me even more suspicious of the media being able to tell the truth and be, be, um, morally consistent about situations that are very similar right okay so let's move on to coinbase um like i said i'm a big crypto investor um 20 percent of coinbase employees about 950 or 20 percent of their their workforce about 950 employees laid off here uh, which is pretty big um the cryptocurrency market obviously is is quite a bit down and that's i mean that's that's the main factor that, that we can point to when it comes to this kind of downturn and this kind of layoff Um, they also discussed possibly letting go of some projects that they were working on. I don't think they've released what those projects are going to be. Um, but it wouldn't be surprising if they were some of their more like, I don't know if Coinbase NFT is going to be going down, like their NFT platform might not happen. Um, Coinbase wallet, I think will be staying around for a little while at least. Um, but I think it's probably best if Coinbase does cut back a little bit. I think they did the same thing also in June of last year, I believe to, uh, June of 2022, they let go, I believe, 18% of their workforce. And that was when the crypto market first started kind of rolling over um, into, you know, the the bear market that we have now. So that's not surprising. We'll see more layoffs. Um, and with Binance going through a lot of um, contraction and a lot of, um, you know, they, they've been dumping a lot, not dumping, but they've had a lot of withdrawals from their assets here recently from customers. We'll see if Binance uh, will be laying off some more people here soon. So crypto, uh, not in a great space right now. There has been a couple pumps uh, here recently in that market when it comes to the ApeCoin for the Board Ape Yacht Club um, uh, NFT project that was big that's gone up here recently. Um, Aptos went up big. Um, I'm, I'm still a big fan of uh, Cosmos or the uh, Atom is the um, is the ticker um, but the cosmos network is fantastic um, and some of those have been really excelling over the past i would say week or so and kind of making back some of those gains that they lost at the beginning of the year so um that's crypto world um another political topic let's go to really quickly is the irs being defunded um it was the last congress the 117th congress that was um able to push a bill through that uh, provided funding for 87,000 new uh, IRS agents. Um, and I will tell you now that I am no fan of the IRS or of taxes in general. I, I worked for a pretty large, well, the largest uh, tax preparation company in the country, in the U.S., uh, for about five years. And, and I did do taxes for three of those years. Um, and um, 
I, I've seen a lot of the actual tax code. I have done taxes. I've done business taxes. Um, I've done investment taxes and capital gains and stuff like that. The 87,000 new IRS agents were not there to, um, they were not hired in order to go after the wealthy. Okay. Uh, most of the audits that happen in the United States of America are not on the top 1%. Okay, so I'm actually really glad that they um, that the the new 118th Congress with the GOP majority was able to stop that funding, get that taken care of. Um, because, in my opinion, the less IRS agents we have, the better. So uh, that's just a personal opinion of mine. Uh, let me know if you guys think differently. Um, I, I'm not necessarily one of those guys that thinks that taxation is theft, but man, it's it, it it's a hard case selling it to me when when you tell me to raise taxes. So. Um, Last topic, we're getting over time here, it's over 15 minutes, but Wells Fargo um, is now going to be limiting a lot of their mortgage investments, um, and that was something that came out late today um, in the market news. Um, one of the interesting things, if you read further into some of the articles that they and, and, the, and the press release that they had, was um, that they were a leader in minority, um, minority mortgage, I guess, investment or lending, which I thought was interesting. Um, because it, when, it, when to me, when it comes to mortgages and when it comes to investment and stuff like that, the people that you're lending to is not necessarily important. It's about the investment itself, if it's a smart idea or not. Um, and the color of someone's skin or their gender or their um, sexual orientation has nothing to do with um, their ability to, you know, be lent money or to make an investment, right? And so I thought it was interesting that they kind of tried to squirrel their way into this. Oh, it's a minority thing. We're going to continue to, um, we're going to continue to support minority mortgages and minority lending in, in all this way. Which, fine. I, I mean, I guess, but it, take that as you will. I'm, I'm not going to make too much comment about that because I, I don't want to go down that road. But I think it was unnecessary and maybe a smokescreen in order to say, hey, well, we're going to be limiting some of the some of the mortgage lending that we're going to be doing. Um, but we're going to continue to support these minorities, so please don't attack us kind of deal. Um, this is also on the heels of, um, let me pull this article up here really quickly, uh, la late last month in December, I assume, um, the Commercial Financial Protection Bureau ordered Wells Fargo to pay $3.7 billion relating to alleged mismanagement of auto loans, mortgages, and deposit accounts. Um, so this is probably an obvious uh, pullback from... from uh, <laughs> from Wells Fargo in order to kind of cover that up. But it is a huge deal when it comes to, um, you know, mortgages in general and, and house buying. Um, it's it's alarming because with the interest rates continuing to rise from the Fed and um, and more bad news coming down the pipeline um, when it comes to spending and, and, and just, you know, mortgages in general, the housing market in general, I think this is going to be another nail in the coffin that's going to, you know, plummet the housing market here in 2023, which is going to lose an immense amount of value for a lot of people. Um, a lot of people buy their houses and, and a lot of their equity and, and money is stored in their house. Um, and so um, if, if you want to buy a house, if you want to sell a house, it's going to be harder. It's going to be more difficult than ever because Wells Fargo will be one less, um, one less bank that you're going to be able to lend from. So that's kind of a big deal um, and, and kind of alarming, and I would not be surprised if there are more banks here in the next coming weeks that are going to be doing the same thing, taking a step back from lending, and and uh, and it is it is what it is. So uh, I don't know if you guys know this, but Wells Fargo has been down 24% over the last 12 months, which is that's quite significant. Um, you know, a lot almost everything is down, obviously in the S&P 500, but that's that's quite uh, that's quite a pullback, especially for a large bank like that. So take that as you will. Um, go do more research on that. If you want to learn more about Wells Fargo and their whole operation there with the lending, but it's it's kind of interesting. So that's my uh, that's my little vlog for the day. We're coming up on 20 minutes. I'm trying to keep these under 15, but I like to talk, so you know how it is. Um, let's uh, let's go over a couple of things. Um, I do want to um, do more vlogs outside of the office here. Um, I'm gonna try to do some possibly in in my vehicle and and when I uh, you know when I'm on my way to the work in the morning. Um, I'm doing these right after I get off work at the shop, and I'm just doing them here in my office. But uh, we're going to get into the shop here soon. Um, I don't know. I, just to show you kind of some of the stuff that we've been doing here recently. For all, my, um, for all my Ethereum guys, sorry. Here's an Ethereum. Well, this is an Ethereum name service. A uh, little cutout that I did uh, a couple weeks ago. Um, and I've got some other pieces that, I'm sitting, that are sitting around here. These are, some, these are some truck part lights that we've been doing. And it's all... <laughs> I haven't done this in a while. 
Here we go. Yeah, those are some lights that we've been doing here in the shop. So we'll, we'll get out of the shop and we'll, we'll look at some of the projects that we're working on um, just to kind of get off of some of the more serious topics like politics and finance and stuff like that. So anyway, uh, I really appreciate you guys listening to and watching uh, day number two. Um, if you guys want to, please subscribe to the YouTube channel, which is just David Coleman. The Rumble channel is David Coleman 27. My Instagram is David Coleman 27. And my Twitter that I actually use is Colma, C-O-L-E-M-A. 63 ETH, E-T-H. So uh, that's my uh, crypto and, and Twitter, um, sorry, crypto and NFT Twitter that I use most of all, and that's what I tweet on, you know, almost all the time. So um, if you guys have any questions, comments, please uh, correspond with me in the comments below. Um, let's all be nice to each other. Um, I'm here to have a discussion with you. I'm not here to argue with you. So um, anyway, I really appreciate it, and I will see you guys tomorrow. See you.